Welcome to a new short series called Beyond the Screen. We'll dive into the code, techniques, and features that power games. So let's begin with shaders. These are the backbone of games, and they go pretty much unnoticed. Water in a game, it's a shader. Clouds, shader. Fire, shader. Even waving grass, that's a shader too. Shaders are literally everywhere. So how do shaders even work? Well, firstly, they are part of the rendering pipeline. This pipeline is a set of steps the game goes through before rendering a single frame to your screen. Most game engines do this for you, so you don't really have the freedom to access and modify the data that's being passed. This is where a shader comes in. When you write a shader, you're accessing this pipeline. This gives you extreme low-level control of what you want to show, and you can essentially hijack a step and insert your own code. This is the basis of shaders. So shaders take a frame's data and they manipulate it based on what code you've written. Then they inject it back into where it was before to continue through the pipeline. This is how games turn, let's say, a single quad into moving water. Here is an example of a shader I've written for my game. It takes two textures and merges them in a set of vertical columns. This is used when you apply wallpaper to walls. It's pretty much a simple animation. So what's happening here is the game is saying, hey, I want to draw this texture. As the call moves through the pipeline, my shader grabs this data and manipulates the call. The output is now the combined textures. Now this was an example of a fragment shader. A fragment shader runs on every pixel on this texture you're applying it to. So this is purely for texture material work, and it gives access to useful things like the screen's current texture, UV coordinates, and other nice stuff. And that's how a simple fragment shader works. If you'd like to support me and my game, you can visit my Kickstarter page and notify yourself for when I launch the campaign.